What's up guys, Jace Two Cents here, and this is a bit of an update vlog to my most recent video where I talked about the XG Station 2 with the GTX 1080 hooked up to an MSI GS73 VR Stealth Pro uh, because I had some pretty degraded results. You guys had some questions and some suggestions, so I'm gonna be utilizing those in today's video to do a bit of a follow-up to that to make sure that the information is as accurate as it could possibly be. With its unique freeform modular system, the new Mastercase Maker 5 from Cooler Master allows unparalleled flexibility with its adjustable internal layout and exterior customization options. Learn more about how you can start customizing your own case by following the link down in the description. So here's the MSI unit. Here is the XG Station 2 that still has the 1080 in there as you can see, but check this out. External monitor, because this was the most common question you guys had was, well, were you using it going feeding back to the laptop for the internal display, or were you using an external monitor? And yeah, I guess I'm kind of stupid because part of me just thought a lot of people would be using it like this and this setup. But I guess it makes perfect sense if you have access to all the ports back there, why not have this display or even a multi panel display. The monitor I'm using though is the Nixius 144 uh, Hertz FreeSync 1080p panel. Obviously with the 1080 in here, we're not gonna be doing any FreeSync. Uh, that's, we're, obviously we don't want any sync on. Honestly, we don't wanna limit our max FPS at all. Uh, and I am using a DisplayPort cable. Should have no impact whatsoever on performance, but I just wanted to let you guys know the complete setup. So anyway, I'm gonna redo the Heaven benchmark. I'm gonna redo the Rise of the Tomb Raider benchmark and redo the Metro 33, uh, or excuse me, the Metro Last Light benchmark. I'm interested to see what happens with Rise of the Tomb Raider because it is a DX12 title, which should help with some of the CPU overhead that, don't go to sleep on me, which should help with some of the CPU overhead that's happening here. Because as I said in the last video, and, and uh, some of this didn't get processed by some of the viewers, where the CPU having to handle the I.O. device as well on here, because this is treated as an I.O. device, it doesn't add load to the CPU so much as it just adds time. We're gonna redo these tests and we're gonna compare them to what they were with the internal display and then what the 1080 was built into the laptop, this, those same results. And we'll just slide these in there and kind of see where they fit. Now, if you wanna follow along at home, you can download Heaven Benchmark, it's free. It's by Unigen, I use it all the time and uh, you guys can just kind of compare your results to this if you want for fun. Here are the settings, uh, ultra quality, DX11 of course, tessellation normal, anti-aliasing at 8x, that's the one that really stresses your GPU, that eight times anti-aliasing, and then of course full screen and system uh, is a 1080p resolution. Now I can tell you right here at the start that we are already about four or five FPS higher than we were when we had it feeding back through to the laptop. The theory is that this cable having to handle the data transfer back to the PC or the laptop and then to handle the internal GPU is adding additional either saturation of the cable and or latency. But obviously we're seeing a little bit of an improvement already. Uh, the score will tell the big numbers though. Okay, so we got a 2411 right here, which is obviously better than the 2182 we had when we ran the internal display. Uh, that's a 9.5% improvement. Unfortunately, that's still 24% slower than the 3178 we got when we ran the internal 1080 in that. We also have really good utilization of the GPU sitting in the 98 to 99%. These dips that you see, these are between scenes when the scene is switching on the benchmark. Uh, so anyway, yeah, GPU is definitely running full tilt. And then here's the CPU usage, and as you can see, only every other core is actually doing anything. Uh, but that's kind of the nature of synthetics, where core one obviously is taking the majority of the load right here, which can actually increase the amount of processing time the CPU has uh, it takes to handle all of this. And that's one of the things that ASUS actually told me. So this is at least directly in line with what we're expecting. Now this is just a synthetic. So let's go ahead and use an actual game engine to see what happens. Now Metro Last Light was kind of an anomaly because we saw very, very little improvement between the 1060 and the 1080 in the XG. Now looking at my notes, we only had an eight FPS improvement from the 1060 to the 1080. So it went from 90 FPS to 98 FPS. The question is, what are we gonna get here on an average? Now, so far the numbers are kind of all over the place. They turn really fast, so it's kind of hard to see, uh, but it does appear to be an improvement. I'm definitely hoping to see a bigger gap between a 1060 and a 1080 because eight FPS was just strange, but I had run my test multiple times. Actually, it took several hours to do those tests and they were consistent. So I'm hoping for an improvement here. 
And we went from 98 up to 112.52, which is actually quite a decent improvement. It's 12 and a half percent improvement from running it on the internal display and having it come back through the cable. Unfortunately, with the VR Titan and the 1080 built into that laptop, uh, that's 28.6% slower than the 157 FPS we had in the 1080 native laptop. The GPU usage is pretty much pegged, which is what we want. That If we saw any major dips, that would tell us it was waiting on the CPU to do some stuff, but no, it's, it's pegged, which is where we want it to be. But this is also why it's important to use game engines in your testing, because as you can see, all of the cores are actually doing something and none of them are reaching 100%. They all seem to be sitting right around the 65% usage mark. So again, this is not bottlenecking. This is just the nature of running a graphics card through a cable. This is actually all looking pretty good. Just to compare, this was the Heaven benchmark. You can see uh, core, hyperthread, idle, core, hyperthread, idle, and you can see that trend. But here, again, everything's sharing the workload. Which is a very, which is what you want. You definitely want that. Now, Rise of the Tomb Raider. It's a DX12 title, which should help alleviate some of the overhead happening on the CPU here, which should give us hopefully a better increase in performance. I saved this one for last because I was really interested in what DX12 was going to hold for all of this. I think we we have kind of a trend here. We can expect it to be better than it was with this, but nowhere near what it was with that, with that guy, right there. So 61.66, that's really interesting because that's only 4.3% faster than the internal, which was at 59 FPS. Now we had 94 FPS when we ran the VR Titan. So that's still 34.4% slower than when we ran a native 1080. Something worth pointing out too here is the GPU is not sitting up at 98, 99% like before. It's sitting between like 88 and 91%. And the CPU at one point during the test actually went up into the 90s on CPU utilization. And then it came down into about the 75% usage across the cores. That's interesting because DX12 is supposed to be alleviating some of this. So I'm, I'm really curious about that result. Now just to answer a couple other questions that were in the comments there, yes, this MSI is using the latest uh, USB 3.1 Type-C with Thunderbolt 3 in there, of course, so it's getting the full 40 gigabit per second transfer rate. All of the drivers for the X station are updated and we are using a third party Thunderbolt driver for that and not the built-in driver inside of the operating system, which, will, which was one of the first questions ASUS asked me. We confirmed I am using the right drivers for this setup. So as you can see, it's really kind of across the board on the way it's gonna to react to having an external GPU with an external monitor versus internal. I mean, I expected, I really honestly thought Tomb Raider was gonna be a big improvement, but it wasn't. So there you go, this video is a direct response to the amount of people asking me, Jay, please do a follow-up video where you use an external monitor instead of feeding the information back through the cable to the internal uh, display. And obviously there was an improvement there except for Tomb Raider, which again, I still can't figure that one out. If you, uh, if you guys have any information about that, let me know. I, I could have sworn DX12 was going to be a bit of an improvement on that, but it really didn't seem to help at all. And they reportedly improved their DX12 implementation, which was really bad when it first rolled out, but it's supposed to be a lot better now. I don't know. Anyway, thanks for the suggestions, guys. If you have any other good suggestions on video topics or follow-ups, let me know. Hit me up on Twitter, at Jay's Two Cents, or in the comments below. And if you guys see some really good ones, make sure you upvote them so I can see them. And uh, anyway, time to go. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one.